got a menagerie of, of neat creatures in the movie. We've got Spuzzard, who's a sort of spider slash fly-like insect that uh, attacks the colony at the beginning of the movie. We've got a car crusher, which is a giant monster that happens during the, the very first phases of the Agatha infestation, if you like, that, that kills Joel's parents. We don't really see it super clearly, but you get the idea it's really big. Um, we've got the siren, who's a large millipede looking monster with large antennae that it's it's relatively blind but it sings and hypnotizes its prey and then feels them out with the antenna which is pretty neat uh we've got sand gobblers we've got baby sand gobblers and uh queen sand gobblers the baby ones about two meters long uh they attack joel when he falls into their nest as as joel does and then later he encounters the queen sand gobbler who's sort of 35 feet long a tor underground torpedo of a creature uh, and of course we've got Hellcrab, uh, our big guy on the beach, uh, who, who is the one that Joel finally empathizes with and uh, realizes that not all creatures are evil. And there's Boulder Snail, who I completely forgot, who's, who's one of the first creatures that Joel meets that doesn't try to kill him. I think most complex is going to be the Hellcrab, just because he's such a major character and it's, he's in the whole the, the finale of the movie involves him and he's he's a beautiful like quasimodo like tortured soul he's doing doing the evil bidding of, of cap but all he wants is to be free and i don't know prolock with his friends but uh he's had a complicated life uh you can see from all the accoutrement and barnacles and bits of detritus that have stuck to him over the years and He's, he's the one we're meant to go, go from being scared of to sympathizing with, and then ultimately he joins you know, Joel's team by, by destroying Cap's yacht and, and, and ending, the, ending Cap's reign. My favorite, I think, would have to be the Boulder Snail, because as it's scripted now, he initially looks quite terrifying, but immediately as he realizes there's no threat, he softens off into this quite beautifully goofy, harmless almost almost like a, a dumb cat face sort of creature who then just just very ca casually wanders off on his own own adventures and doesn't care about doesn't care about killing people or surviving he's just he's just wandering around having a great old time oh over the last few months my 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 internet history is just insects amphibians mutations uh giganticism it, it's actually, there's, there's some amazing stuff out there. It's stuff that you'd never, never believe was actually a real creature from microscopic creatures through to actually quite large insect, horrific looking insects that, that exist on Earth that, you know, I had no idea existed. Originally, Michael Matthews sent me his, um, his pitch document, which was, it's one of the best documents I've seen for that sort of thing, which was more or less like Joel's diary, but it was a mishmash of different pictures and research that he had done, uh, but done up as a, as, a, as a volume as if Joel had completed it himself while writing about the making of the movie. And it was very elaborate and had lots of small sketches and diagrams and then pictures pasted in of different creatures and, and concept art and shots from other movies that felt the same. And it was actually a really beautiful document. And that was, that was the original inspiration to get involved uh, with the film. And from there, it's uh, a, lot of, a lot of macro photography of insects. You get some incredible detail in these creatures when you, when you get real close to them, or if they're real big. The tone of the movie, it's not a, a flat-out horror or, you know, sort of gore picture. It's, it's the whole tone of the picture, it's about this it's a coming of age sort of thing for Joel and as he learns to be braver and you know if we played it for real then Joel would be dead six minutes into the movie because he just wouldn't survive but uh, Dylan O'Brien brings this really nice light humor that just keeps you smiling through the film as, as you working as, as we're working and we want the creatures to reflect this in some way it's it's almost it's like a like a nod to the camera that the creatures you know we've, we're pushing so much personality into them and making them even though they're big and scary just trying to give them not so much a comedic edge as just an aspect of goopiness 
that lets you lets you believe they wouldn't have got to Joel and it's, it's Joel's lucked out and managed to defeat these creatures one by one at the beginning of the movie and it's just having the, having the creatures they're a little bit a tiny bit an edge of goofiness if, if I'm allowed that an edge of goofiness that just that even though they're big and ugly and scary there are bits of you that's kind of like oh that's adorable very very deep down way 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 deep down you just have to keep at it you keep at it keep working keep keen keep learning especially visual effects changes a lot uh, so it's just keeping up to date with everything that's going on how processes are changing different different software and different ways of achieving different results uh, you know a bit of luck's involved um, I've been extremely lucky of course um, but it's just a whole matter of just keep on plugging keep on keep on going keep on learning and eventually eventually it pays off it can take a while you end up looking like this <laughs>